Right now, new reopening measures are going into effect today across Dane County. What changes you need to know about? Plus, food banks are seeing an increase in demand right now. Why it's becoming more difficult for them to fulfill the needs of those asking assistance. And not as much rain in the forecast, but when will we see the sunshine? All of the answer in just a few minutes. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday, May 19th. I'm Josh Spreider with Leah Linscheid and Chris Stanford. Starting today, Dane County is taking a step toward reopening, removing travel restrictions and allowing tennis courts and disc golf courses to reopen. It's part of a new plan from health officials called Forward Dane. It uses nine criteria, including number of COVID tests and community spread to determine when to move on to the next phase. Right now, we're in the prepare to reopen phase when businesses are allowed to perform operations to get ready to safely reopen. According to Public Health Madison and Dane County, the next phase we can enter is phase one when most businesses will be able to reopen at 25% capacity. We want people to get ready to um, return to some type of normalcy. Uh, we think it's important the earliest we will be able to enter phase one is one week from today. We have a link to the full plan up right now on channel3000.com. Green County is the latest in the state to lift its emergency order. The county district attorney's office says the order might not be enforceable under current ordinance. The director of the health department there says while the order has been lifted, businesses and families should be aware the coronavirus is still present. Dean County leaders are working with local groups now to help address housing issues that have worsened by the pandemic. Dane County Executive Joe Parisi says the new multi-million dollar plan will reduce evictions and improve access to housing for the most, uh, those most impacted. The plan includes $10 million in funding also from the Federal CARES Act for eviction prevention in addition to efforts to increase housing stability. People can't make the rent. The renters are suffering. Many of the landlords who depend on that rent to pay their mortgages are suffering. The Tenant Resource Center will do what they do best. They work in this area already, and so they were the perfect partner to help distribute these funds to those in need. Parisi says the money is expected to help nearly 9,000 Dane County residents. As of now, the Tenant Resource Center says assistance will top out at four months. If you want to learn how to apply for all of this and when you can start doing so, we have a link to this story up right now at channel3000.com. So money right now is tight for lots of us, and that's evident in just how popular food pantries are becoming in our area. CEO of Dane County's St. Vincent de Paul, Ernie Stenenfeld, says since this pandemic started, he's seen almost double the amount of people who need help putting food on the table. The nonprofit relies heavily on Second Harvest Food Bank to help stock their shelves. Second Harvest, though, is also feeling the pressure to provide. There's less food in surplus. We are getting fewer donations. So we've supplemented that by purchasing food. And that food's getting more expensive because of the competition for it. We're, we're competing against retail. So sometimes food banks' requests for food from their suppliers are put on hold for weeks. While they're trying to help the community, they could use some help from us as well. If you have the time and the resources, you can find a list of food banks you can donate to up on channel3000.com. Help is on the way for many Wisconsin small businesses struggling to get back on their feet. A new program called We're All In has $75 million to go around. This is largely funded by federal dollars from the CARES Act. 30,000 small businesses most impacted by the pandemic will get $2,500 in cash grants. Businesses can apply in early June. Any business that receives a grant will have to commit to certain safety protocols. New state numbers out show that workers have now received more than a billion dollars in unemployment benefits. The state portion of that, about $418 million. The Department of Workforce Development has received more than 2.1 million weekly claims. About two thirds of those have been paid out. The department has taken more than 4.2 million calls since mid-March. The phone is still ringing, too. Yesterday, more than 4,000 workers applied. More Uber employees will soon find themselves out of a job. The company says it's cutting another 3,000 employees. Staffers got the news yesterday in an email. These latest cuts come just two weeks after the company announced plans to cut 3,700 full-time jobs. Uber says it's closing or consolidating 45 of its offices worldwide. All of this, of course, comes from reduced demand for rides with so many people staying home during the pandemic. 
Just days after filing for bankruptcy, JCPenney is now planning to close nearly 200 stores this year. The 118-year-old company has struggled to survive for years, and the pandemic has caused sales to plummet. The retailer has 85,000 employees, but hasn't said how many of those folks will lose their jobs. JCPenney is now the fourth national retailer to file for bankruptcy just this month. 604 right now, there was a fight this morning to restore hazard pay for workers at Kroger grocery stores. Kroger owns Pick and Save, Roundies, and Metro Market stores here in Wisconsin. The chain recently ended its $2 an hour hero pay program, instead offering its employees a one-time bonus of $400 for full-time workers and $200 for part-time workers. The political director for United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1437 said that money will not go as far as hourly increases. We think that Kroger should be leading by example and really setting the standard. Uh, we know that what happens with a lot of these large retailers is that when one domino falls, then they all fall. She adds the union is negotiating on a national level right now to try to get back that hero pay. Kroger did not respond to a request for comment on this story. Meantime, Target is the first major retailer to extend hero pay to its hourly employees. In an email to workers Monday morning, Target CEO Brian Corno said that the company would extend a number of benefits, including its $2 per hour temporary wage increase through July 4th. Coming up on 606 on a Tuesday morning, I just keep thinking one more day we can do it. We've been <laughs> stalking this dreariness for too long. Yeah, weather rut for sure here across southern Wisconsin. Things are going to improve a little bit today. We're not seeing as much rain on the radar map. Some light showers in and around Milwaukee, maybe a little bit of drizzle at your house, but overall we'll see a nice drying trend through the day today. Looking off to the west, things are relatively quiet across the northern plains. Still plenty of moisture through the Ohio River Valley. You can see the counterclockwise circulation of these showers. They're moving around this area of low pressure that has been our main weather player for the last couple of days. So it is finally off to our east, still close enough for some of those wraparound showers though across parts of southern Wisconsin. As far as clouds are concerned, we are stuck with those as well. Here's a live look from the WIC TV sky camera shot. Lots of low level cloudiness, not necessarily right along the ground though. When you look at visibility, visibility is pretty good in most spots, although it is starting to come down just a little bit through southwestern Wisconsin, still around 10 miles here in Madison. We're actually up a degree in the capital city to 50. Many spots are right around 50 this morning as well, so a mild start to the day. Your future track forecast model has a northeasterly wind again around this storm system that will continue to usher in a little bit of moisture from out of Lake Michigan. The best chance for rain, though, likely to stay east of Dane County. Can't rule out a little bit of drizzle here and there but most of the organized showers will be to our east. Clouds are going to stick around though through the afternoon as highs reach right around 60 degrees, maybe just a touch warmer in the west. Here's a look at the evening forecast. Staying cloudy through the evening with temperatures only dropping a couple of degrees by 9 or 10 o'clock. Sky should begin to clear out though overnight. That'll set us up for some sunshine tomorrow. Here's your future track forecast on Wednesday. Still an easterly wind, but with that sunshine, we should be back to around 70 degrees. And it looks like the sunshine is going to stick around through the rest of the week, Thursday and Friday. Highs will stay in the 70s. We'll warm a little bit each day. Dry weather is expected. Coming up for the weekend, though, it looks like those rain chances are unfortunately back in the area starting Friday night into Saturday and then maybe a better chance Sunday and Monday. At least it'll be warmer, though, with highs near 80 degrees. Yeah, I'm liking the look at those 80s. That's a little above average, isn't it, Hans? Yeah, a little bit. We should be around 70. Okay, nobody's complaining. Thank you very much. 608 now, we are all probably guilty of this. Turning to the internet when we get sick to Google the symptoms. Well, aside from causing unnecessary panic, new research shows that information isn't really reliable. Researchers in Australia looked at 36 different mobile and web-based symptom checkers and found they only produced an accurate first diagnosis 36% of the time. The correct diagnosis showed up in the top three results about half the time. So if you're worried about your mental health, Yoga could help. A new study released in the British Journal of Sports Medicine showed that for people dealing with mental health conditions, yoga may improve symptoms of depression, including anxiety and post-traumatic stress. Yoga isn't just stretching, it focuses on controlled breathing and simple meditation. Researchers found that the more yoga people did too, 
the more benefits they saw. Okay, so since we talked about this last hour, Chris <laughs> and Josh have been working to try and change my mind because I'm not a huge Are yogi. Are we getting you to come around? I mean, I, it's hard to say no when the, the yoga teacher is over my shoulder <laughs> giving me the eye. So we always say the people that don't want to do yoga usually need yoga the most. The what problem, are you talking about? Leah, is you're so fast-paced. You never take a minute just to sit back and just relax. I was telling it. Chris, I read books about slowing down and meditation, but I listen to them <laughs> on audio at the 2x speed. <laughs> so, maybe. maybe. I will say right. during this time, especially, yoga has been a lifesaver. Like, I do it a couple times a week and with my other workouts, and it really does make a difference. Okay, you teach me. And I'll do it. All right. Fine. Team yoga session. Sold. Let's do it. On a Tuesday. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. 10 minutes past 6 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. A quick look at traffic right now. Across Dane County, no crashes to report. I was tracking a few slowdowns along Highway 51 near McFarland. Looks like we're up to 38 miles an hour there now. It was a little worse earlier on. Uh, Rock County looking good this morning. There's your drive times. Closer look right now. We're at 24 minutes from Janesville to the Beltline, around 15 minutes from Sauk City to Middleton. And that's a look at your first warm traffic. Coming up, what part of the country now has the highest rate of coronavirus infections? And President Trump says he's taking a drug to prevent him from catching the coronavirus despite a lack of FDA approval. We'll have more on that after the break. 610 right now. Stay with us. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Attic Angel Community has earned a reputation as the one and only. But what's so memorable to the people who live here? It's good local heart. Interesting friends. The view from my window. Continuing education. The food. The amazing art studio. Happy hour. There are many reasons to love Attic Angel Community, but there's just one Attic Angel. In 1930, we began helping people in Milwaukee who were hurt and killed by the carelessness of others. Over the past 89 years, the awards for our clients totals well into the billions of dollars, probably more than all the other personal injury firms in the state combined. When you do something for so long, you tend to get pretty good at it. And we will continue that fight for justice every day in towns throughout Wisconsin. Habish, Habish, and Rotier. In these uncertain times, it has never been more important to maintain a clean home or business. We are prepared to get your space back to clean and healthy again. We've added a new EPA-registered cleaner that disinfects hard surfaces and deep cleans carpet, rugs, and upholstery. Remember, we disinfect our equipment after every job and disinfect our vehicles daily. We believe in doing things the right way. That's why we've been your trusted partner in clean for over seven years. Services buy one air conditioner and get one gas furnace for only one thousand dollars. Bogos are back, and it's a beautiful thing. We're back. We got a to go food. Oh, good! What a treat after a long week and no cleanup. When you can't dine in, then get it to go and support our restaurants during Madison Magazine's Restaurant Week to Go. Two weeks of fabulous to-go menus you'll love. Visit MadisonMagazine.com for details and menus. Restaurant Week to Go, presented by Kesnix. Food service design, equipment, and supplies. I guess there is still cleanup to do. I'm Joanne Jenkins with AARP. The coronavirus continues to affect us all, and we are here actively supporting you and your community. Every day, we're providing trusted information from top health experts, sharing tools to help protect families from fraud, and creating resources to support family caregivers everywhere. As always, you can count on AARP to advocate for you and your family. Join us and stay connected at aarp.org coronavirus. 
Developing this morning at 614, the Navajo Nation is now surpassing New York as the country's worst infected area with the coronavirus. The nation is now reporting nearly 4,000 COVID-19 cases in a population of 175,000, meaning they now have the highest infection rate per capita in the entire country. This is partly because the Navajo Nation says it has tested more people than any state at 11% of its population. According to the Navajo Nation president, experts believe the outbreak is at its peak right now. COVID-19 has claimed at least 140 Navajo lives. President Trump says he's currently taking hydroxychloroquine to stop him from catching coronavirus despite FDA warnings. During a roundtable with restaurant executives, the president revealed he's been taking the drug along with zinc for nearly two weeks now to prevent him from getting coronavirus. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. When right start, now, yeah. yeah when... It's been around for 40 years for malaria, for lupus, for other things. I take it. Frontline workers take it. A lot of doctors wow. take it. The FDA has said hydroxychloroquine should only be used for patients in a hospital, and at least one study says the drug doesn't work against COVID-19 and could cause heart problems. The president says he did consult with the White House physician before taking it. Thermometers are hard to come by these days, and it could get worse. Manufacturers and distributors say that the devices were already in high demand, but now companies are going to be requiring temperature checks, and they're also buying these devices in mass bundles. The CEO of America Diagnostic Corp., one of the nation's largest thermometer manufacturers, says demand is up 900% for his company's non-contact thermometers. Multiple medical suppliers say they simply can't make enough right now. Biotech company Moderna says their first human trials for a possible coronavirus vaccine couldn't have been better. They're the first company, they're the first company in the US to reach the human trial phase. They say they saw positive results with the antibodies in 25 subjects reaching and even exceeding levels in patients who've recovered from the virus. According to the Independent, the experimental vaccine will now move to phase two, where they'll test 600 patients. If the results remain positive, it'll still have to go through at least one more round of trials before it's ready for FDA approval. Meanwhile, the CDC is issuing a new warning, saying an outbreak of the measles could be on the horizon because less people are getting the vaccine. Researchers say they're seeing a drop in child vaccinations as more people stay home and avoid in-person doctor visits. They say there's about a 17% decrease in infants receiving their shots compared to this time last year. CDC scientists say if 90% of the population isn't vaccinated, outbreaks are more likely. Developing right now, India and Bangladesh are bracing for landfall of the strongest storm ever recorded in that area. Super Cyclone Umpun continues to strengthen in the Bay of Bengal this morning. The Indian government is reviewing preparedness measures and the prime minister is pledging his government support for residents. Cyclone Umpum is equivalent in intensity to a Category 5 hurricane in the Atlantic or a super typhoon in the Pacific. It's expected to make landfall on Wednesday in eastern India near the border with Bangladesh. 617 right now. Hattie, it seems like there's been a lot of activity in lots of parts of the world right now. That's true. We've already had our first named storm of the season in the Atlantic as well. You can see just a few lightning strikes on the edge of the map there. That's actually what is quickly becoming post-tropical cyclone. Arthur. Lots of rain on the map is actually due to an area of low pressure that we're now watching that's moving through Indiana. That's the same system that we saw impact our weather for the last couple of days. So the moisture continues to track eastward across the country. Here's a closer look at southern Wisconsin. We do have a few showers that are working their way westward from the Milwaukee area. Best chances for rain are likely to stay east of Madison through the day today. Can't rule out a little bit of drizzle though. Here's a look at the probability of precipitation. It's relatively low for south central and southwestern Wisconsin, but again, can't rule out a little bit of drizzle or a stray light shower. Winds will be from the northeast around 10 to 20 miles an hour today. That'll keep things on the cool side again. We should be hitting highs near 70 this time of the year, but we're only back to around 60 later on this afternoon. Clouds are going to hang around today, but we do have more sunshine in the forecast for tomorrow. Might be looking a little wet though as we head into the upcoming weekend. We'll detail all those rain chances in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Hattie. Governor Andrew Cuomo is telling New York's professional sports teams to get ready to resume playing. Cuomo says teams should be prepared to play without fans, but the games can be televised. He says the state will assist all teams with whatever they need to get back on the field too. 
Como also says that he's eager to see his Buffalo Bills play, but is acting objectively in his call to bring back sports. Saying he thinks bringing back sports is what's best for the state right now. Social distancing and work from home orders have pushed many of us to try creative new ways to get the job done, and that includes photographers. They're now using video calls for photo shoots they would typically do in person. They place the phone down somewhere. We make sure it's a pretty good spot with some decent lighting. And then I crack jokes to them. I have them snuggle and just do different prompts. That right there is Kristen Lopez. Right now, she's not focused on pixels or resolution. Her mission is capturing a moment in time, hoping that years from now, folks can look back and remember making the best of their quarantine. Lopez is not charging a fee for her engagement sessions. She's only asking that couples give to a local charity. She will then match that donation. Those are great pictures, too. Not bad. Well, here's another creative way to get the job done. This priest in Michigan is spreading joy while socially distancing, using a squirt gun to anoint his parishioners with holy water. This was on Easter, but the pictures are now going viral. The priest says... They came up with a few other options to anoint members of their congregation, but thought that providing a little fun to lighten the mood was the best role. My mom is constantly trying to get me to go to church before quarantine. I think this would convince me, a little fun. <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, little, little squirt here from the, from the priest. Why not? I still, I think of those sound effects. The pew, 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 <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I want, to, like, I, want the, I want the priest to be saying that whenever he squirts the... the I can't the take you seriously when you do that. I just wanted another excuse to do that. Josh, you got any sound effects for us? No sound effects. <laughs> but I'm just like still amazed at the stuff that we've seen come out of this. I mean, stuff like that that we never thought we'd ever experience. Right. No, I, I hear you. We see, and just when we, you know, think we can't be, you know, shocked anymore. More entertained. Here comes a priest with a squirt gun. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. All right. Coming up on 621, still head for us this morning. How one restaurant is working to welcome back customers in a safe way. And in our next half hour, we're following breaking news from overnight. The president says the administration will no longer fund the WHO. That story is coming up. Stay with us. We're back right after the break. I'm possible at Every day, our doctors and nurses, our cooks, housekeepers, therapists, and every member of your health care team give the most of themselves to care for you, to care for our community. These are your champions of health. It's time to freshen up around your yard. This year, don't struggle with bulky bags of mulch. Call JR. Concrete Coatings is the nation's largest residential concrete coating company, proudly serving homeowners throughout Wisconsin. Our coatings are four times stronger than regular epoxy and won't chip, crack, or peel. They're impact resistant and UV stable. Our unique process begins with a base coat to seal cracks and level the surface, then flakes in the color pattern of your choice. A top coat is applied for a durable finished floor that can be installed in as little as one day. Act now to save 15% on your concrete coating project. Ask about 12 months, same as cash financing. TSR Nation is growing by the day with satisfied customers throughout Wisconsin, and we want you to be a part of it. As a special bonus, call during this program and receive a free TSR swag pack with your concrete coating project. Call 1-800-886-8411. That's 1-800-886-8411. It's Slumberland's huge memorial sale. The best time to freshen up your home and save big. Get this love seat absolutely free when you buy the sofa for only $5.98. Our best-selling Adirondack chairs are back for just $1.88, our lowest price ever. If you've been waiting for our very best deals, this is it. And get free no-contact shipping with no minimum. Now is the time to save on your favorite things. The memorial sale at Slumberland Furniture.
Through all the world events since 1936, Culligan Water has continued to provide better, safer water with our filtration systems for homes and businesses. These days, as a designated essential business, Culligan's water professionals are standing by ready to help. Every day, our doctors and nurses, our cooks, housekeepers, therapists, and every member of your health care team give the most of themselves to care for you, to care for our community. These are your champions of health. Download the Channel 3000 app today. 624 on your Tuesday morning. We've been asking you to share your morning with us. And Michael shared this photo with us. This is a Leah Linscheid special, yeah, that's for sure. Michael knows what Leah likes. Hi, little buddy. It's a great picture, too, capturing uh, what I'm assuming is the sunrise there. Through glowing the trees. in the background. Uh, gorgeous. Yeah, Michael knows what he's doing with the camera. So what does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We'll share our favorites right here on News 3 Now this morning. An extra points if there's a cow in it. <laughs> cow points. Just <laughs> Always. <laughs> so there's a restaurant in Amsterdam that's working on a new way of solving the social distancing problem. Yep. Diners at Mediamatic Eaton will eat in glass greenhouses. Take a look at this. Servers will wear face shields and then they're going to serve the food on long planks. The restaurant hopes to reopen on June 1st. You can see uh, right there quite a beautiful scenic view. The first round of reservations already sold out. That looks very pretty. Yeah, I'm impressed. Look at those planks. There you go. You can see how long they are. Nice little safe way to get your meal. You know, a lot of people, though, they're, they're worried about going back to restaurants because even though there's going to be social distancing, they, everybody's still touching things. You're right. You know, it's a, lot, it's a lot of contact. It's like the restaurant touches something and then you end up touching that even though there may be no contact or whatever. So they're, they're, we're still trying to figure this all out, trying to get back to normal. It's a great time for innovation, that's yeah. for sure. Miss Hattie McLean, can you innovate for us? Give us a little sun. Well, please. I like that idea of the greenhouse because that would also keep you dry, which is clearly what we need around here. We're seeing some light raindrops on the camera lens this morning. Lots of low level cloudiness. Here's our pet walk picture though for today. We're still going to have highs near 60 with lots of clouds. Thank you very much, Hattie. Stay with us. We're back after the break. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer... Let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. In the Madison area, call Heating and Cooling Incorporated. For your heating and air conditioning needs, call Tarkenton Brothers. This week, you're going to get more at the Brothers Made Memorial Day Super Sale. Get in now with more savings on more brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana. Right now, improving your home is more convenient at Maine with up to 18-month 0% financing. And we make getting more easy with expert delivery free and our risk-free 30-day price and satisfaction guarantee. The Memorial Day Super Sale. For more selection, more savings, and more satisfaction. It all ends Monday at the Brothers Made, your local store for more since 1938. Back. We got to go food. Oh, good. What a treat after a long week and no cleanup. When you can't dine in, then get it to go and support our restaurants during Madison Magazine's Restaurant Week to Go. Two weeks of fabulous to go menus you'll love. Visit madisonmagazine.com for details and menus. Restaurant Week to Go, presented by Kesnick's. Food service design, equipment, and supplies. Uh -oh. I guess there is still cleanup to do. For almost 50 years, we've built trust within our communities by making customer delight our top priority. That trust allows us to improve lives one home at a time. During this challenging time, we want to be sure your needs are being met without stress by offering 20% off siding with no interest for three years. So go ahead, visit us online, or call now from the comfort of home. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for feltco
confident in your gut, you feel confident to take on anything. With Benefiber, you'll feel the power of gut health confidence every day. Benefiber is a 100% natural prebiotic fiber. Benefiber. Trust your gut. For patients that have sensitivity, it's very common to have a gum health concern as well. You know, I talk to dentists every day, and they're able to recommend new Sensodyne sensitivity in gum. It's really good dentistry to be able to recommend one product that can address two conditions. Lots of low clouds lingering across the area, but I'll tell you when the sunshine is going to return to southern Wisconsin in just a few minutes. And you're waking up to some changes in Dane County this morning. We're breaking down the newly introduced reopening plan in effect right now. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks. Happy Tuesday. It is May 19th. I'm Leah Lynchide, along with Josh Spreider and Chris Stanford. We're waking up to some changes this morning as the first parts of Dane County's safer at home order go into effect. The forward Dane plan includes three phases and a preparation phase that we're currently in. These are the nine metrics that are going to determine when we can move on from each phase. We're going to be in this pre-phase until at least May 26, at which point all of these criteria need to be either green or yellow as they are right now. Now, once these criteria are met, we're going to hit phase one. That's when most businesses will be able to reopen at up to 25% capacity. Remember, the earliest this can happen, May 26th. Phase one will last for two weeks. Then the county will start looking at those nine criteria again. More than half of them need to be green at that point, and none involving positive tests or cases per day can be red. We have to be in phase two again for two weeks until we're eligible for phase three. Then more than half of the metrics have to be green. None of them can be red. We will stay in this phase until a vaccine is available, which many experts say could take at least a year. Um, we know this is really confusing, folks. Lots of details here. We have it all broken down for you graphic by graphic up on channel 3000.com. I knew this morning the city of Beloit is making plans for their own safer at home order. It'll require all public spaces like bars, restaurants, salons and churches to follow social distancing. It also strongly discourages gatherings of more than 25 people. Now big gatherings at public parks with more than 25 people will not be allowed. The resolution will go into effect once the Rock County restrictions expire. That'll happen 8 a.m. a week from today on May 26th. I'm following breaking news overnight. President Trump says his administration will permanently stop funding the World Health Organization unless the organization shows substantive improvements over the next 30 days. He tweeted this memo out overnight. In it, he says the only way forward is if the WHO, quote, can actually demonstrate independence from China. The president said the U.S. would suspend payments last month, but NPR reports the U.S. was already $199 million behind in payments going back to last year. Governor Evers and his administration won't try to make any more statewide rules for fighting the coronavirus. The administration is pulling their scope statement, which is the outline for the emergency rule mandated by state law. It showed that the governor's intent to write a rule similar to, if not the same as, the safer at home order. This will not happen, though. Governor Evers says there is no use making it just for the Republican legislature to deny it. New this morning on the West Coast, the Oregon Supreme Court is stopping a rural judge's order that tossed out that state's stay-at-home order. The judge ruled the state's Democratic governor should have gotten the legislator's approval before extending the order. It's pretty similar to the situation here in Wisconsin just a week or so ago. That Supreme Court has put that decision on hold while the justices review it. It all stems from a church's lawsuit arguing the state's social distancing directives are unconstitutional. Breaking news just into the alert center this morning within the last few minutes. I've learned all Michigan voters will get absentee ballots sent to their homes before their August and November elections. The Detroit Free Press reports their Democratic Secretary of State said they will send 7.7 .7 million ballot applications out. Now this move could be challenged in court. Jocelyn Benson says voter turnout was up significantly for their May 5th election with most voters casting ballots by mail or through a drop box. President Trump won Michigan by less than two tenths of a percent in 2016. There's new research from UW Oshkosh this morning suggesting that April's in-person voting could have led to a large increase in the rate of positive coronavirus tests weeks later. According to the Journal Sentinel, the report is at least the third to come out since that election and the first to have a positive link. It finds counties with more people voting at each polling place saw a higher rate of positive tests. 
The study is not peer-reviewed yet, which researchers say is the next step before submitting the study for publication. State advocates for people with disabilities and minority voters are filing a federal lawsuit ahead of the next election in Wisconsin. The lawsuit argues not enough has been done since that primary 7th primary to ensure voters stay safe in the future. Disability Rights Wisconsin is based in Milwaukee. That group is asking a judge to order more poll workers be hired and that every voter in the state get an absentee ballot. Former Governor Scott Walker weighing in on the November election. He says the chances of President Trump winning Wisconsin will likely come down to how voters feel about their health and the state of the economy. In an interview with Politico, Walker says, quote, I think it still boils down to a referendum on the president. He says if voters don't feel good about how the president is handling the coronavirus pandemic or how he's managing the economic downturn, it'll be much more difficult for him to win Wisconsin. Republican Tom Tiffany will be sworn in today after winning the seventh congressional district seat in a special election. His opponent, though, is hoping it'll be a short-lived term. Wausau School Board President Trisha Zunker says she's going to challenge Tiffany for that seat again come November. Tiffany easily beat Zunker in that special election. She says, though, she expects higher turnout in November because of the presidential race. Take a look at this new video just into the newsroom this morning. The rain across northeast Wisconsin is still taking a toll. Tessa Rude posted this video on Twitter. She's standing along the Fox River in Green Bay. You can see most of that walkway is covered in water flooding in from the river. Now, the constant rain made some roads impassable, causing many vehicles to make U-turns and find different routes. 635 right now. Hattie, I know we got quite a bit of rainfall here, but they really got it up north and east of here. They certainly did, yeah. About two inches here here in and around Madison. However, those amounts were quite a bit higher to the north and east. You see some of these darker purple shaded areas. That's more than five inches of rain. Again, around two inches here in Madison over the last couple of days. And we're not done with the rain just yet. We still see some light showers working their way in around Milwaukee. A little bit of drizzle not showing up on the radar map, though possible across the rest of southern Wisconsin. If we zoom the map out a little bit, you'll see a wider perspective. Things are pretty quiet off to the north and west. So the best chances for rain today as the storm system moves away will be east of Dane County. Here's a look at your weather track. Even though you're not going to likely see a lot of rain today, you'll experience quite a few clouds. You can see those clouds moving from the east across the area. The back edge of the clouds still past the Mississippi River Valley, so we're not looking for a lot of clearing today. A live look from the WIC TV Sky Camera shot. Lots of low-level cloudiness in the area, although as far as fog is concerned, we're not seeing any major issues with fog. Visibility is still pretty good in all spots. Down to about two and a half miles now in Mineral Point. It's about three miles in Viroqua, but everyone else looking at 10 mile visibility. Temperatures are quite mild early this morning, starting out around 50 degrees. Madison, Monroe, Platteville, Prairie du Chien, Lone Rock all at 50 this morning. Temperatures will climb a little bit higher than yesterday, although with the clouds in place, it's going to be tough to get too warm today. Your future track forecast model zeroing in on those chances for showers, mainly east of Dane County. A little bit of drizzle and lots of clouds, though, for the rest of the area. High temperatures should be in the upper 50s, close to 60 degrees later on today. Skies are expected to clear, though, overnight tonight, which is going to set us up for some sunshine on Thursday or Wednesday. Rather, Wednesday's forecast has mostly sunny skies, 70 degrees for the high, 72 with sunshine on Thursday and 74 on Friday. Looking ahead to the Memorial Weekend holiday, there will be chances for rain each day, although temperatures will be a little bit warmer will be a warm weekend for us with highs near 80 degrees. You'll also notice an increase in the humidity as well. Yeah, loving those temperatures. Going to be feeling a little bit more like summer, Hattie. Thank you. Developing this morning a wrongful death lawsuit regarding the two Wisconsin brothers who disappeared after a work trip to Missouri is now settled. Records out of Caldwell County show the court ruled in favor of Nick and Justin Demel's families. They're being awarded a $2 million settlement plus attorney's fees. That civil lawsuit was filed back in December. Garland Nelson is still facing two counts of first degree murder for the deaths of the Shano County brothers along with several other charges. 638 right now. New information this morning. Police say the 15 year old suspect accused of shooting a former Verona High School student shot him in the back of the head in his garage. Myji Sanders made his first appearance in court yesterday. A witness told police Sanders shot Shea Watson after trying to grab a bag of marijuana from him. In an interview last fall, police say Sanders admitted that he owed Watson $100 for marijuana. Sanders is being charged as an adult right now in the shooting. 
His lawyer says that he can argue that, though, and move the case down to juvenile court. Right now, the 15-year-old is being held on a half a million dollar cash bond, and he'll be back in court a week from Thursday. Breaking news within the last 30 minutes, French President Emmanuel Macron is no longer has or has no longer has absolute majority in the country's lower house of parliament. Political reports seven members of parliament from his party were defected this morning. A group needs 289 seats to have an absolute majority. Macron's party is short by one with 288. Near this half hour, a national outlet naming Madison as one of the 10 U.S. cities best positioned to recover from the coronavirus pandemic. Forbes says analysis from Moody's shows college towns like Madison and Durham, North Carolina are in a good position to grow in the years following the pandemic. Cities in the Northeast that were hit especially hard, including New York and Philadelphia, land on the list of cities expected to continue to struggle. Among the cities in the worst position to recover, Honolulu, because of its exposure to tourism. 640 right now, no crashes to report across southern Wisconsin this morning, but I do want to make you aware of some construction happening overnight. This is near Lake Mills along I-94, which is actually going to be shut down in both directions. This is from the Deerfield exit all the way to Johnson Creek, beginning at 7 o'clock tonight through tomorrow morning. It will be open for the morning commute tomorrow, but they're going to be working on the bridge over County Road Q, which is going to be closed until September. So I've posted this up on channel3000.com. The, de the, the detour details, that's hard to say, is up there as well. So you can find it up right now. Let's take a live look outside just about 641 this morning. Another dreary start to this Tuesday. But we've got one more day, folks, and we've got sunshine and more typical weather for this time of year in the forecast. And you've heard of bumper cars, but what about bumper tables? We're gonna have some fun with social distancing. That's next on News 3 Now This Morning. Don't miss the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale on now. Select from many styles on our showroom floor or custom order the Amish crafted sofa just right for you. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture. At Wanakee Furniture ETC. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. And with great deals available, there's never been a better time to buy at your local dealership. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection remains open to serve our customers and communities during these times of uncertainty. During Safer at Home, we've got you covered for all your plumbing service needs. Call us for help. We are here for you. We asked real customers what they really love about Spectrum Internet and TV. Spectrum Internet has the fastest speeds for everything I do. There is no turning wheel. It's immediate. Spectrum is the fastest. Bam. <laughs> Get the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance with Spectrum Internet, delivering starting speeds of 200 megabits. That's more than enough for all your devices for $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. I can't get over how much on-demand Spectrum has. I can literally watch a new movie every night. I got all my shows, and he's got all his shows. With the Spectrum TV app, I can watch live TV anywhere. It's perfect. Add Spectrum TV and enjoy more free HD and more free on-demand. Plus, use the Spectrum TV app to watch live TV on the go, all from $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. The fact that they don't have contracts, that says a lot about their service. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. Install Spectrum services yourself. Get a self-installation kit shipped right to your home. Call 833-906-4499. Wells Asphalt Paving. Expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Don't miss the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale on now. Select from many styles on our showroom floor or custom order the Amish crafted sofa just right for you. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture. At Wanakee Furniture ETC. A local nonprofit helped them become homeowners, but the COVID-19 crisis is making it tougher to keep up. We're concerned about our finances. Where's everything going? News 3 Now's Chris Stanford explores the challenges facing nonprofits and the people they serve. Thursday at 6. 
It's the first ever Coaches vs. Cancer Wisconsin Virtual Gala, Wednesday, May 20th at 7 p.m. An auction and inspiring program, all from the comfort and safety of home. Register now at Coaches vs. Cancer, Wisconsin.org. With bars starting to open back up across the country, a lot of business owners are finding some new ways to keep customers safe and happy. Yeah, one spot in Maryland is setting the <laughs> bar pretty high. Take a look at this. Fishtails Pub in Ocean City bought these bumper tables for customers to use once they're allowed to reopen. Customers would stand in the middle and then would be able to walk around and chat while keeping a safe distance from others. Now it even has a little built-in table inside the tube so you can rest your drinks on it. Okay, so as a dad, I thought you would really like this. Your girls would get such a kick out of this. Yeah, I could put, I could do this at home, but then like they'd break everything. They'd just like run around and knock into all of our furniture and like knock over the TV and the china cabinet and all that stuff. That's fair. That's fair. I think this would be really fun. Josh, what do you think? I think it's fun and I think it gets people outside, but you get to, you know, actually be safe but there is fun along with it too. I think it'd be a different experience, something that you'd be talking about, and I know, Leah, you'd have that all over Instagram. I would have it all over Instagram. I'd have my drink all over me. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Bouncing off everybody. I think it's there's a fair warning. spilled drinks in that. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure, yeah, it'd be fun for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, then I'd get annoyed with it. So we're not taking Chris, is, is the thing here. <laughs> well, Daddy and I. I'll make an appearance. Well, what do you funny. do with the tube when you need a bathroom break? Does someone take Ooh. that uh, bumper table Good or do you get point. it back? The important questions <laughs> when you're out. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't fit in the bathroom, yeah, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about our weather. We don't really have to worry about spending a whole lot of time outside today. Again, we're dealing with some drizzle and light showers in Platteville. Things are starting to dry out. We're not seeing any drizzle there right now. However, it's pretty cloudy. A very gray start across all of southern Wisconsin. We have had some drizzle here in uh, the Madison area, though, yet this morning. A live look at Doppler track is showing you still a few light showers in and around the Milwaukee area. Best chance to see any organized rain showers will be east of Dane County today. Temperatures are starting in the low 50s. 50 is actually a pretty popular number on the map this morning. Northeasterly winds are going to still keep it a little cool through the day today. We're looking at those winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles an hour. High temperatures today as a result only in the lower 60s this afternoon. We should be closer to 70 this time of the year. We will get rid of the rain and the clouds for the rest of the week, but what's ahead for the Memorial Weekend forecast? Of all your details in just a few minutes. All right, Hattie, thank you. So as we do every morning here, we want to take a moment to thank our first responders. Today we're giving a shout out to the Monroe Clinic Emergency Department. You can see here they're holding signs that say the real heroes of this country and the heart and soul of the war against COVID-19. We couldn't agree more and we thank you for all that you do. Love that photo. 646 now. We are following breaking news overnight relating to the Mueller investigation. The latest from the Department of Justice is coming up in the morning sprint. But first, it's uh, time to see who's turning three today on May 19th. And look at that. It's three times two. My daughter Paige is turning six today. Aww. Happy birthday, Paige. Love you, sweetie. Also, happy birthday to Karos, Drew, and all the other kids. Uh, who sent in pictures. Uh, thanks for celebrating with News 3 now this morning. Such a sweet photo. Amazon.com skills to enable Channel 3000 news briefs. Now I get to make a difference in people's lives the way that the nurses that took care of my grandma made a difference in her life. Now is the time to change your life. Herzing University makes it possible without leaving home. Herzing offers dozens of online degrees in nursing, healthcare, IT, and business. Start studying online and take the first step toward a new career. I'm an ICU nurse. I'm possible. Builder and I go to Nuns. Why? Well, my clients love them because they have all those smarty pants appliances. You know, like those fancy touchscreen fridges and ovens that text you when dinner's ready. Personally, I don't care for all that techie stuff. I'll stick to my good old fashioned icebox, thank you very much. But hey, my clients love those smarty pants appliances, so we go to Nuns. 
Nuns. Kitchen, bath, and flooring. services buy one air conditioner and get one gas furnace for only one thousand dollars bogos are back and it's a beautiful thing Wisconsin is one of those certain places with certain people who do a certain thing better than anyone else, anywhere. In Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Look for our badge. It's on everything we make. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. It's 6.50 in time for the morning sprint. We start with some changes to the safer at home order here in Dane County. The forward Dane plan includes three phases along with the preparation phase that we're currently in. These are the nine metrics that will determine when we can move on from each of those phases. We'll be in this pre-phase until at least May 26th, at which point all of these criteria need to continue as either green or yellow. After that, each phase will last at least two weeks. Once we reach phase three, we will stay there until a vaccine becomes available. In Rock County, the city of Beloit making their own plans for a safer at home order. It will require all public spaces like bars, restaurants, salons, and churches to follow social distancing. It also strongly discourages gatherings of more than 25 people. Big gatherings at public parks with more than 25 people will not be allowed though. The resolution will go into effect once the Rock County restrictions expire. That'll happen at 8 a.m. a week from today on May 26th. Breaking overnight, President Trump says his administration will permit Permanently stop funding the World Health Organization unless it shows substantive improvements over the next 30 days. He tweeted this memo out overnight. In it, he says the only way forward is that the WHO, quote, can actually demonstrate independence from China. The president said the U.S. would suspend payments last month, but NPR reports the U.S. was already $199 million behind in payments going back to last year. It just doesn't make any sense to uh, spend a lot of time uh, doing something that we know isn't going to be successful. Governor Evers and his administration will not try to make a statewide rule for fighting the coronavirus. The administration is pulling their scope statement, which is the outline for the emergency rule mandated by state law. It showed intent to write a rule similar to, if not the same as the Safer at Home order, but this is no longer in the works. The Oregon Supreme Court is stopping a rural judge's order that tried to toss out that state's stay at home order. The judge ruled the state's Democratic governor should have gotten the legislature's approval before extending the state's order. The Supreme Court put that decision on hold while the justices review it. New research from UW Oshkosh this morning suggests April's in-person voting could have led to a large increase in the rate of positive coronavirus tests weeks later. According to the Journal Sentinel, the report is at least the third to come out since that election and the first to have a positive link. The study not yet peer-reviewed, though, which researchers say is the next step before submitting the study for publication. 
State advocates for people with disabilities and minority voters are filing a federal lawsuit to demand changes be made for upcoming elections in Wisconsin. The lawsuit argues not enough has been done since that April 7th primary to ensure voters stay safe in the future. Disability Rights Wisconsin is asking a judge to order that more poll workers be hired and that every voter in the state get an absentee ballot. Former Governor Scott Walker weighing in on the November election. In an interview with Politico, Walker says, I think it still boils down to a referendum on the president. He says if voters don't feel good about how the president's handling the coronavirus pandemic or how he's managing the economic downturn, it'll be much more difficult for him to win Wisconsin. Right now, a wrongful death lawsuit regarding the two Wisconsin brothers who disappeared after a work trip to Missouri is now settled. The families of Nick and Justin Diemel are being awarded a $2 million settlement plus attorney's fees. That civil lawsuit was filed back in December. Garland Nelson is facing two, or still facing two counts of first degree murder for the deaths of the Shano County brothers, along with several other charges. Police say the 15 year old suspect accused of shooting a former Verona High School student shot him in the back of the head in his garage. A witness told police that Maiji Sanders shot Shea Watson after trying to grab a bag of marijuana from him. In an interview last fall, police say Sanders admitted he owed Watson $100 for that pot. Sanders is being held in a half a million dollar cash bond and will be back in court a week from Thursday. There are new developments in the deadly shooting at a Navy air station in Florida this past winter. Attorney General William Barr says Mohammed Al-Shamrani had significant ties to Al-Qaeda. The 21-year-old killed three U.S sailors and wounded eight others in the December attack. After unlocking phones that Al Shamrani had tried to destroy, federal investigators learned he had spent years planning that attack. They believe he was radicalized as far back as 2015. Breaking overnight, the Department of Justice will drop its case against 13 Russian nationals and three Russian entities. They were all indicted as part of Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Business Insider reports the Justice Department dropped the case because the case wouldn't serve justice or national security. All defendants were charged with one count of conspiracy to defraud the U.S. Coming up on 656, a look at your first warned traffic on a Tuesday morning. Seen a few more delays popping up on Stoughton Road north of the Beltline. A couple delays popping up on Park Street. If you're hopping on the Beltline this morning, you shouldn't have too many issues if you're heading out and about. That is your first warned traffic. And your first warm weather forecast still dealing with lots of low clouds and even some drizzle here in the Madison area. Visibility is not a huge issue though across southern Wisconsin. A look at the radar map showing you that any light showers right now are to the east of Dane County. Can't rule out a few of those showers though and even some drizzle as we head into the morning. Our afternoon we should start to dry out with high temperatures at 60 degrees. Winds from the east northeast though will stay strong at 10 to 20 miles an hour. The weekend forecast does include some more showers.